This program is made possible by a grant from the Pennsylvania Public Television Network. Well, I'm fortunate to be able to pursue a sport that, that enables me to become uh, uh, closely associated with uh, probably the most scenic areas in Pennsylvania. Uh, by that I mean the rattlesnake habitat uh, coincides with probably the most scenic areas in, in the state. Uh, mountainous, rocky, overlook areas, and uh, that's just an added bonus to snake hunting. You get to, you get to look at these beautiful areas. And the snakes do, uh, in my opinion, live in the most beautiful sections of the state. Disturbing too much. See him on the rock over there? Hey, this is yours. We're in the game. I'm not going to do it. Pick him up. Isn't that beautiful? We always catch him around this big rock here. This particular spot is probably. Uh, almost eliminated in terms of uh, rattlesnake population. There's probably uh, maybe uh, a dozen rattlesnakes left on this ledge. At one time, I would suspect that there may have been uh, 80 to 100 snakes in this particular colony. So it's uh, definitely uh, declined substantially in the last uh, 30 to 40 years. I don't, I don't believe that any snake should be killed. I used to. I used to think everyone that was the only good snake was a dead snake. But when you learn about them, and that, it's it's a different story. You know, it's part of our environment, and they have a place on Earth the same as everybody else does. People have been taught since they've been little that the snake is evil. Go to the Bible and look. The serpent, you know. So everybody's been taught since they've been they big, you know, going to Sunday school and everything that this thing is evil. It's gonna, you know, and they aren't. If they were evil, the good Lord wouldn't have put them here. So here they are. Okay, this is the kind of stuff that we, the state of Pennsylvania, the Fish Commission, and most of the snake hunters is trying to stop. You know, it just. I mean, that's a good conversation piece, but these come out of Texas, and that's what they do with all their snakes in Texas and Oklahoma, Wyoming, and different places. They, they get them and they kill them, they butcher them by the pickup truck loads. Ophidiophobia, the fear of snakes, is common throughout the world. It is this fear that has caused generations to kill snakes on sight. And it is this fear, coupled with the encroachment of man on natural habitat, that has led the timber rattlesnake in Pennsylvania to the brink of extinction. When I first started hunting rattlesnakes uh, about 15 years ago, uh, I killed several rattlesnakes myself. They were, uh, they were trophies but I've come to learn enough about the rattlesnake that I understand their place in the ecosystem and I understand that they do have uh, a reason to be here and uh, the more you know about something it seems that uh, the less you want to kill it. Kenny Stairs, known by some as Snake Kenny, is a self-taught naturalist specializing in timber rattlesnakes. I enjoy hunting rattlesnakes uh, and studying the rattlesnake. I, I've been studying rattlesnakes for 15 years, and every year it seems to get more involved. This year, uh, 
we started hunting in uh, late April, and uh, this thus far this year we've found uh, close to 100 rattlesnakes, and that's been at uh, about uh, eight or ten different sites. To determine the sex of a rattlesnake, we're going to use the probe. This probe will insert approximately six to eight scales if it's a male, and if it's a female, it'll only insert about two to three scales. So we're going to insert this into the vent on the side very gently with a lubricated rod. I'm going to check both sides. And we see that this, this probe goes into scales. This denotes that it's a female. OK, what we have here is a typical area to find timber rattlesnakes. This, this rock right here is uh, pretty much uniform thickness. And uh, it has rock underneath it, and no doubt it has cracks down below it. So uh, this is a prime place to find a rattlesnake, if there's rattlesnakes in the general area. Uh, we have uh, huckleberry bush over in here. And this is uh, a, uh, a prime uh, requisite for the rattlesnake to, uh, to have. They, uh, they like the huckleberry bushes. It draws in the rodents in the summer, and it, and it provides shade around the edges of these rocks. Anyone would come up on this ledge today, if there was a rattlesnake even laying in these, these uh, huckleberry bushes, the chances are they wouldn't see it because the rattlesnake prefers to go undetected whenever possible. And uh, if I was to walk past here and not look, there could be two or three snakes laying right here in these, in these bushes, and, and uh, you would never know it. They won't strike out. They don't uh, protect their territories at all. And uh, they're just out to get the sun and the things they need, the food and the sun, and then they get back under their rock. All venomous snakes in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania are slit pupils. That is cat eyes, elliptical pupils. Those are venomous snakes. All other snakes in Pennsylvania have the round pupil. Pennsylvania has three species of venomous snakes, the timber rattlesnake, the northern copperhead, and the eastern massasauga rattlesnake. The eastern massasauga is, a, is an endangered species. There's very few left in the state. The timber rattlesnake also has the facial pits. These pits are heat sensors. They sense heat and uh, are used to secure prey. The timber rattlesnake uses its tongue for smelling. The snake flicks its tongue out, picks up scent particles in the air, retracts the tongue, puts them up in the roof of the mouth, and that is where the scent particles are interpreted. The timber rattlesnake in Pennsylvania eats white-footed mice and chipmunks with an occasional bird taken. The snakes can go long periods of time without food. The timber rattlesnake can go six months without food, as long as they have fresh water with no ill effects. Rattlesnakes secure prey by lying in ambush. When they strike a mouse or a chipmunk, they immediately let go. The prey then runs off and dies. And the snake waits a short period and crawls after the prey uh, using its sense of smell and, uh, and also its heat sensors. As the weather warms in the summertime, the snakes become more active at night. Uh, a 70 degree night will cause the timber rattlesnake to feed by night. The timber rattlesnakes shed their skin periodically. This gives them room to grow. It, ex it rids their body of external parasites, gives them a clean new appearance. Uh, similar to uh, other animals taking a bath. The timber rattlesnake is a low frequency reproducer. This means the adult female timber rattlesnake does not bear young for the first time until seven to nine years of age. The reproductive process of the timber rattlesnake is complicated, but basically consists of three stages and generally takes three years to complete. 
The first year is known as villagenesis, the forming of the yoke. The second year, mating takes place. And the third year, ovulation takes place and the incubation process. So it takes a full three years and sometimes four years for the reproductive cycle to complete. Well, this is a uh, timber rattlesnake den here in Pennsylvania. This is typical of most rattlesnake dens. Uh, in the springtime, the rattlesnakes emerge from pockets well below these rocks down in frost-free pockets. Uh, the rattlesnakes at this particular den use these openings right here for the most part. This is where we see the majority of the rattlesnakes come out. When they emerge in the spring, usually in late April, depending on the elevation, the rattlesnakes come out and lie about here in the den area and some of the key rock areas nearby for uh, up to several weeks, depending on the uh, temperature, at which time they disperse and move out into the forested hillside uh, to take up uh, residence for the summer. And these dens are, uh, are uh, communal dens. The same snakes leave the den and come back year after year. Snake hunters are a rather tight-mouthed bunch in that uh, they rarely reveal the locations of their favorite areas except to close friends. And uh, normally when we find a den or we have a lead on a den, we'll check it out. If we decide that it is a a viable population of rattlesnakes there, we keep that to ourselves. And uh, then we, we take that information and we, we store it on, on records. And then uh, I hope to pass this information to my son when he becomes old enough to go out with me and uh, he's shown an interest in it. I'll pass this information on to him and uh, continue to be able to observe the rattlesnake in a wild state. Amateur naturalists like Ken Stairs have added to the body of scientific knowledge on timber rattlers. They keep detailed records on birthing, hibernation, and feeding habits, and track the fate of entire colonies. But most snake hunters will tell you that while they respect the rattlers as a part of the ecosystem, they hunt for the pure thrill of it. Say I was at my first snake hunt, I was two months old. Two and a half months. Two and a half months old, all right. Um, I, I caught my first snake when I was four years old in Morris, a little ring snake. And uh, first, first rattlesnakes I caught, I caught five of them when I was 12 years old up, right up here in Perry County. Uh, uh, While well, I stayed with it, uh, I grew up with it. I got into snake hunting because I think it's interesting and it's probably one of the most exciting things that I've, that I've done. It's something about uh, when you're up in there and you look up under this rock and you see that rattlesnake there, it's just an adrenaline shot like I've never had. I mean, it, it's crazy. And then when you get him up in your hand, I don't know what it is about it. I, I can't describe it, you know. It's, to me, it's just a shot of adrenaline. Uh, I've been hunting snakes, rattlesnakes, and copperheads for about eight years now. Just for a hobby, just like fishing, hunting. I like getting out, just as he said, the adrenaline, you see a snake, it's just a big thrill, I think. Well, I guess my primary interest is really the outdoors and just the, uh, the chance to get out and see a rattlesnake in uh, the natural, its natural habitat uh, was an opportunity I, I thought I shouldn't miss. The excitement of finding timber rattlesnakes in the wild attracts hunters from all levels of society. It appeals, for example, to these four physicians out looking for timbers under the guidance of an experienced snake hunter. Within a short period of time, the first timber rattler is found by one of the doctors. We were walking off the, off the main rock pile here and I was just walking across a, a couple of boulders and he was, he was kind of stretched out on one of the grass knolls next to me. I saw it first and I started rattling after I saw it and um, I pulled up with the snake graspers and brought them out here and then we pinned them.
This is the second time I've uh, been out uh, snake hunting, per se, and uh, we had uh, similar results. This was uh, some years ago in Clearfield County, and it's just fascinating to see the snakes in their own environment um, and understand more about uh, what place and what role they have in nature. I think it's sort of a, a natural uh, instinct to be uh, threatened or uh, spooked, I guess, by uh, snakes in general. I, I think it's mostly out of uh, ignorance that we're uh, persecuting uh, snakes and therefore they're, they're killed out of ignorance more than anything else. And it's had a profound impact on the snake population to the point that uh, in several states in the Northeast, are, uh, they put snakes uh, rattlesnakes in particular on uh, an endangered species list and they are uh, they're recommended as a threatened species uh, here in this state. I think just the adventure of it I mean usually uh, in the kind of work that I am you usually don't get a chance to do anything like this you either watch it on TV or hear about other people doing it and this was a, like a chance of doing it so that's why I did it. What they say is, when I touch a snake, I charm it. When I take a hold of a snake, it seems to just quiet down and don't do anything. So that's how I got the name of Snake Charmer. I've been handling snakes for probably around 40 years, maybe 45 years. And uh, I've always had a fascination for them. And when I was a young boy on the farm and stuff, we always had black snakes around, and we weren't allowed to kill them. Now this is a western diamond bat. He has a lot of poison in him. They have a beautiful set of fangs ready to go to work on you. Definitely a bad actor. He put a lot of hurting on you, but he ain't gonna die again. You're not gonna die from the bite of a rattlesnake. Okay, this here is a picture of the hand that I was bit on at Cross Forks, Pennsylvania. And as you can see, I had my wedding band on and what happened is the fang hooked under the wedding band. And the way you know that if you have a bad bite is the first thing that happens is your lips go numb. Well, within a few minutes, my lips started going numb. They had suction on my fingers because I got nailed in these two fingers. And uh, he hit me twice. A lot of my friends have been bit, and I always wondered what they went through. And this was... First hand. But this guy's got a pretty good sized head. He's probably got fangs. Oh, right now, probably three quarters of an inch long. And as you can see, he's calmed down. He's not rattling as much. And the more you handle them, the calmer they get. But you can never trust them because they will bite. I don't care how long you've had them or anything else. They will bite you. There's no doubt about it. They don't have to be coiled to strike. They can strike at you from any position. All they do is whatever a length of the S that they draw back in is what they'll hit you with. That far they can strike. Uh, it's the Sunken Fang Society. The club members know it as a dummy patch because it's what you get after you've been bitten at least one time. Each time you get bit, you get a patch. I got bit once three years ago now. A copperhead got me. And it was a mistake that almost happened several times out in the mountain. Pin a snake, and when you reach down and grab him by the head, sometimes they pull their head out from under the pinner. And this one just happened to hit me in a blink of an eye. And that quick, I felt pain, intense pain in the finger. It felt like, felt like I stuck my finger on a hot coal burning. And Within an hour, my whole hand up to the wrist was swollen. Uh, by about three hours later, I was swollen all the way up past the elbow. I spent nine days in the hospital for that bite. $9,000 hospital bill. Uh, 
pain all the way into the shoulder, swelling. My arm is swollen twice its normal size. Well, personally, uh, I just started out in this. Uh, I've been out with Tom here twice this year, and we've caught uh, four rattlers and one copperhead. Now, the reason I got bit was I was getting a little bit, uh, I guess, cocky with the snake, and I didn't uh, use all the precautions that I should have. Tried to pick him up, you know, just from the middle, slide my hand up behind his head, and that's when he turned around and got me. I was in the hospital for a week. Well, I went in on a, a Sunday, and I come out on Friday. And that weekend, I went to a snake hunt and handled snakes. <laughs> They're not an aggressive snake. They're very nice. It's a monocle cobra. It comes from India. By just rubbing them, they seem to be uh, a lot calmer. Like your dog, they like to be petted, too. When people see men handling snakes, it's kind of a macho thing. It doesn't surprise them too much. But when they see a lady handling them, they're, they want to know, why do you do this? What made you start? liking snakes and so then I explained to them you know that I've always liked them but I was afraid of them and once I learned how to be around them and what made them bite it's safer to handle them and they're interesting this is snake country and here especially today the timber rattler is king for today, in the village of Landisburg, Pennsylvania, the annual rattlesnake hunt is in full swing. Trophies are given to snake hunters for capturing the largest snakes from the surrounding Pennsylvania hills. Okay, this is the largest copper-headed hunt. I caught him about two miles from here. He uh, was up in an old sawmill, and he... Uh, He's really a big one for this, for this area. He's really a pretty snake, 36 inches long. This is the first big copperhead I've caught in 10 years. Like I said, I've done it 20 years. This is the first big copperhead I've caught in 10 years. It gets your adrenaline flow, and you just, you got to do it. People have come from miles around, drawn by the love and fear of the snakes. For many people, it is the only time they will ever see a poisonous snake up close. Now, you want to touch a thing on back? No. <laughs> An important snake ritual is the act of touching the snake. <laughs> snake handlers never seem to be happy with a passive audience. There appears to be an invisible barrier that is crossed when an individual reaches out and touches a snake. Oftentimes, the snake handler includes their own children in the ritual of snake touching. Here you go. Let me hold it. You're not going to squeeze it, are you? Mm -hmm. I know you want to touch the tail. Let me hold it. Just put your hand underneath the tail. That's it. Let him touch it. your hand. you, honey. I'm mainly fascinated with snakes. I have been since I've been small. Uh, they're very interesting. Our main goal at the snake hunts is to educate the people that come to see us and entertain them a little bit as well. But mainly to show them that it's not necessarily just because they have a fear of something, and there are many, many people that have a fear of snakes. Uh, it's, it can be a real phobia. To show them it's not necessary to kill one just because they happen to be afraid of it. That's probably our single biggest goal, is to educate the public to help protect the snakes that we enjoy going out and hunting and sacking. It is the sacking contests that draw the crowds to the rattlesnake roundups. Contestants see how fast they can put five snakes into a sack. The winner gets a trophy. The losers get the consolation that hopefully they have not been bitten. They use diamondback rattlers imported from western states. Diamondbacks are more aggressive and their venom is more toxic. They are a much meaner snake to handle than the timber. But the Pennsylvania Fish Commission prohibits the use of Pennsylvania timbers in sacking contests, claiming it's not good for the snake. 
So the sackers import diamondbacks and increase their risk of being bitten. But it is the risk that attracts the crowd. That is the single biggest uh, problem we have with the, with the Fish Commission, is our sacking contest. They have made us switch from timber rattlesnakes to western diamondbacks because they, they feel that uh, it hurts the snakes to sack them. Well, I have at home uh, two, timber, or two western diamondbacks that I've had for five years. They had been in every sacking contest that year and uh, have delivered 13 babies for me. So I have a difficult time believing that with the regulations that we have, not allowing snakes to be handled improperly to where they would be hurt, that it does them any damage. But we made the change anyway, like they asked us. The problem with not doing the sacking contest is it's the single biggest draw we have. It's what bring the people in. is our chief interest is in a resource that's under our jurisdiction where the Fish Commission has the jurisdiction for all reptiles and amphibians and it's like anything else in the forest ecosystem out there it needs to have enough populations to do what it should be doing in the natural scheme of things in the forest and and we're not against people having uh, events to raise money for their fire company or whatever what we're against is the negative educational experience that goes on particularly during the time of the sacking contest activity because it, it reinforces people's negative impressions about snakes in general and it isn't good for the snakes at all. The Pennsylvania Fish Commission is charged with regulating timber rattlesnake hunting and the snake has been protected since 1984 when it was put on the threatened list. There likely will be increased regulations designed to protect the rattlesnake population in Pennsylvania. This program is made possible by a grant from the Pennsylvania Public Television Network.